7% of our young people, of our, of our adults even, are unemployed. What do you do with the group of people, 47% of whom have never worked? Um, and, and we're going to have to find some new ways forward in that space. Me too. Yeah. 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 It'll be a tipping point too. Yeah. Businesses of the bottom line, we cut people out to save wages, but then in the day, people have got to spend. Yeah. And they don't think they've got more to spend. So it's a zero sum game for everybody. And those are questions that are coming up. I'm sure in New Zealand, your, your, your national dialogue and these things are pretty, are pretty advanced too. Um, what's it mean to be a human being? What's it mean to be in the world? You know, what's it mean to be here? What does it actually mean to be a human being? Um, you know, um, that's a question that more and more businesses that I'm working are asking. Are we good for the world as a business? Or are we actually going to cause social consequences that are poor for people? Uh, so they're big national conversations. Just one more framework, guys, and we'll um, oops, and then we we'll let you have a bit of a break. The second framework, uh, and again, it's sort of in, in this. Uh, in some ways, we don't need to spend too long on this because I've made the point. There's a part of you and your work that's visible, and there's a part of you and your work that's only can only be guessed at. So if I went in to watch any of you working at whatever you do, I uh, went in tomorrow morning. I could look at an event. See you doing something. If I stay with you for a while, I start to see some patterns of behavior. I start to see you doing, oh, she does this this way, or he does this this way. When he meets a new person, you know, when he has a problem, but you start to see some of those patterns of behavior if you stay with them a while. And if I stay with you long enough, what I start to see and understand is your systems and structures, how you organize your work, your timetables, how you handle emails, and um, you know, all the systems and structures that you organize your work through. All of those three sort of things are visible about all of us. Like even you now, we started with an event, and 45 minutes into this conversation, you, you'll have started to pick up some of my patterns of behavior, right? And you know, you'll be watching and, and understanding my systems and structures. You know, how does he use slides? Where does he move? You know, because you're probably processing at all sorts of different levels. You'll start to pick up my systems and structures quite quickly. All of those visible things point to what my real vision and my real values, my mental models actually are. Like if I spoke respect, if I, if I was disrespectful down here and had respect as a value, if you, if you had no time with your kids and being a good dad, you're completely out of alignment. You're completely out of alignment. The things you care deeply about better be showing up in your practice. Otherwise, what are they? other than words on a page or words on a wall. And I mean a lot of organizations think, forget yourself for a second, talk about, think about your group, where the things we have as our vision and our values don't turn up in what people would see us doing. And those arrows there are called alignment. They're the arrows They say that if an organization or an individual doesn't align what they're really going for, what they really care about with their practice, um, it's an inauthentic space. It's an inauthentic practice. Okay. Um, I worked with New Zealand Rugby. I'll just give you a, a glimpse of this. Uh, really good organisation uh, in Molesworth Street. It's many, many you know better than me in many ways. But the first time I went in to work with them, um, I came to the front desk. There's a guy sitting behind the front desk. It was a big unit. Um, I've been in. I've introduced myself. Hi, I'm Brendan. This lad stood up. Yeah, gave me his name. He said, "You're really welcome, mate." And then he came out from behind the desk. And he stood out in the sort of foyer with me having a bit of a chat. I was thinking, oh, that's nice. Um, and then sort of halfway through, another guy came over that, that I knew. And this young guy said to me, you got your phone with you? Would you mind handing it over, please? I think I'd prefer to hand over one of my children. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my phone, your phone is a pretty embarrassing thing nowadays. But I said, sorry, he says, can you hand me your phone? And I'm thinking, I'm just getting this here, okay, this is a, this day. Uh, but I took my phone out and I handed him the phone. He says, come with me. And he brought me over to, you know, where the All Blacks' names are and everything. And he said, stand there. And he's gone to the cupboard. He took out the Web Ellis cup. He says, hold that. And with my phone, then he's gone and he's taken a few pictures of me holding the, the World Cup. And then he gave me the phone back and said, send that home to your mates in Ireland and tell them the Irish have got their hands on the World Cup. <laughs> Him during the day. Here's the point. And 
several times, because I was in a foyer space, several times during that day he came out from behind the desk to greet somebody. Not everybody, because lots of people he just worked with. But I saw him with the father and son, he brought the son to show a, um, a, a hurricane shirt. You know, so he brought this kid down, went out of his way and brought him down. So I saw more, because to me that was an event. But as I watched him during the day, I could see, no, this is a bit of a pattern of behavior. And realized that actually, when you look at this guy, he's, he's expected. He's expected. Uh, as a system and structure that's in place there to make sure that people feel welcome when they're new to rugby house. It's an important place to all New Zealanders who love rugby, say, and we make people welcome when they come here. The next day I was talking to him and I said to him, uh, you know, it was really nice, I sent the picture home, my brother sent back a rude message, <laughs> full of swear words. In Ireland, swearing is just punctuation, so it's nothing, <laughs> it's nothing, nothing uh, more than that, but my brother sent me back a big message. Uh, and I said to him, uh, it was really nice, and I noticed you doing that a bit yesterday with different people, uh, not with the web editors, but just different things like that. And he said, that's our vision. And I'm the front desk of the vision. Is our vision is to unite and inspire New Zealanders. We unite New Zealanders around something that they love and we inspire them to be great at something. Just rugby, you know, it's not religious. But we make it clear that we can be great at things in our country. Uh, and he said, and I get to be the front desk of that. You see, you know, what is that? That is an example of, at least in his case, really good alignment. But what we care about and we say is our vision will turn up at the front desk of our, of our office. We're not just going to give you a spoused theory here and then do something else. We're going to line it up. And you, you know yourselves when you work with a, a great team of any kind, a great people or a great office of any kind. You know yourself that you know, we don't have to have a lot up here. We have to have something up here in the vision space. We care about something. We have to have a shared space that we care about, a campfire. Uh, but we don't just have a campfire. We make sure, we make sure that we do the things that have that campfire and um, you know to have light and heat for us. Uh, our practice matches our our, our beliefs. Did you uh, say that this is true? I beg your pardon? Did you say that this is true? The it was the front vision of the There was great joy in his work, in watching him work. There was great joy in his, I, 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 I'd have to he'd have to answer the question himself, but as I watched him work he took deep pride in what he was doing. And he went out of his way for people to make sure, you know what? You'll remember this place, it's a good place to come. And uh, you're welcome here, mate, and it's a good place to come. And I, I love seeing that level of connection in practice. It's the practice that interests me. Now, if you have people who are off the reservation not doing that, what do you do? You have to have a conversation about it. If you have somebody who's so far off the reservation in terms of the vision and the values is the exact opposite of what they actually do, you have to have a pretty conversation because it's a standard you can't walk past there. The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. And if we name things here that we deeply care about, we've got to be prepared to have conversations down here to make sure that we're as aligned as this humanly possible to be. Otherwise we're just a talk fest. A whole group of people with fancy words up here and horrible practice down here. Time for a bite to eat. Um, we've got ten past seven now. Uh, if we could